Hey, don't touch that dial. I want to take you behind the scenes to the recording of our new theme song, an interesting side of the entertainment business. Fishing pro Gary Roach will take us under the scenes in a lake to those walleye we can't see. I have a lot more, so you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with tips on how you can become a more practical sportsman. That's a definite keeper, Fred. Here's the situation everybody faces as they head out from the boat launch, land behind you, and a big stretch of water ahead. Now this happens to be Lake Leelanau, but it could be any lake. And these fishermen happen to be Mark Martin and Gary Roach. Not your everyday anglers, both of these guys have taken world walleye titles and consistently rank at the top in walleye tournaments. Now we're going to explore this lake through their eyes and see how they use electronics to find the underwater structures that hold the walleye. It's a crib they put in here uh, years ago. They put rock cribs in here. It's not part of the natural lake. It's something that they put in here to help the fish spawn and give them some kind of protection and stuff like that. There we are right there. Well, once Mark finds the underwater rock pile, he tosses out a buoy a floating marker that's nothing more than a weight on a line attached to a float, and that float could be a Clorox bottle, but it visually marks the spot that will probably tend to drift away from. There, the sinker just hit the bottom, and that marker will stay over the rock pile. Now, looking at the electronic graph, we can see the rocks on the bottom and fish suspended just above those rocks. Electronics don't help you catch the fish, they just help you find out where they are so at least you're fishing in a spot that holds them. And I hooked one that I hoped was a keeper. Yeah, pretty close to it. Yeah, that's a keeper. That's a definite keeper, Fred. Still got my worm. Yeah. You think so still? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, without putting it on the... They look bigger in the water. Yeah, yeah, they definitely do. Well, as it turned out, this walleye was undersized, just short of the minimum, and had to go back. But next to the practical yardstick marks on the side of the boat is a white plastic box. That's the antenna for another electronic innovation, the GPS, Global Position Satellite System, that works something like radar in that you can see your boat position on a screen in relation to other spots that you want to go to. So if this was another place on the lake, for example, That's, you could mark that. I'll show, you the, I'll show you my rock pile. Okay. I'm going to go to the menu and get it back down again. I'm going to go to plotter setup. Uh, see, it's about eight miles over there, so 10 will, do it. 10 will do it, see? So I'm going to clear that. Then I'm going to go to waypoint recall, which is 15. Wasn't that 15 in the rock pile over there? We, you should keep 14. a little note. 14. 14. 14 or I'm going to go to 15. I think it's 15. 1, 5, and I'm going to enter. Excuse me. Oop. Waypoint recall. Destination waypoint. 1, 5, enter. That's our little rock pile. I'll go to plotter. 3.6 miles, and that's a destination right there. So we just have to drive from there to there? Yeah. Or? yeah. And and How I close are we with to the rock pile if we go on that spot? Oh, it's right on it. I mean, that'll take you right to it. Hmm. Yeah. Why go to the rock pile when Mark Martin is? Oh, we don't need to go to the rock pile today. It, it's a, it was a good spot. We got some nice fish here yesterday. The GPS replaces the Loran Sea, which was popular a few years ago, and brought Mark back to the fish. A little better one. The walleye are all about this size from the walleye fry plant a few years ago on Lake Leelanau. Why, you know what, why this spot is so good here along this area right here? We've caught fish here every day for the last four days. It's because of the big food shelf. Look at the shoreline there. Mm -hmm. Big sandbar out there. You know, but, but the distance between here and the sandbar means it's a drop off and it slowly comes out and it, and it creates a big food shelf. And the wider the food shelf from the sand, off, sand pile, or you might say, or the drop off, uh, the more fish you're gonna have using it. So you, you really don't wanna have a sharp drop off. Smallmouth like that, and occasional spring walleye, but in the summertime, the walleye like a longer tapering one. Then she drops off from like about 17 feet to 35. So if you get your second drop off, where the fish can go out in the deeper water, in this clear water, 
And then in the evening they come up and they got a big food shelf here to feed on. This is why this is such a good spot. And as you can see, Gary Roach and Mark Martin look for those food shelves, spots between the shallows and the deep water, shelves about 15 to 20 feet down where walleye do most of their feeding. And there's some walleye on these shelves all day long. Yeah, it's not a bad fish. Yeah. Biggest one of the day? I'd say it was the biggest one of the day. Oh, that's a yes. nice. Look at that, huh? Well, we caught walleye all day consistently because these guys knew where to find them. Besides looking into the water, they used a graph to tell them what was on the bottom and how deep. A very practical floating buoy marks the spot they found on the graph. And we used a somewhat complicated computerized GPS system to take us to spots where they caught fish the day before. But when you head out to that open water in search of fish, be sure you at least take an inexpensive marker buoy so, so you can at least mark where you caught fish. Now, a graph can help, and so can a GPS system if you want to spend the money. But be practical, and I hope you catch a big one. current issue of the Practical Sportsman magazine, we feature young hunters and fishermen. Here's 17-year-old Jim Freezy from Alpena with his 11-point buck. It had a 24-and-a-half-inch spread. He got it in muzzleloading season, Mackinac County. 16-year-old Chris Whitman from St. Charles got his trophy 7-point on opening day in Saginaw County using a Marlin 3030. It qualifies for a real tree hunting award because it had an outside spread of 20-and-a-half inches. Here's a 20 and a half inch smallmouth bass that Mike Manzuik from Mount Clemens caught from Lake St. Clair. Great picture, isn't it? And Amanda Patrick from Portland caught this 43 inch northern pike casting a Johnson silver minnow. It's a great trophy in anybody's book. You know, catching trophy fish is something that anybody can do if they're at the right place at the right time. Leona Dowd happened to be on one end of the line when a trophy walleye grabbed the other. The ninth one of the day of, not this big though. No, this was the biggest. What was the smallest? About 21, I guess. 21 inches? Yeah. I mean, it's still, that's a heck of a walleye. Mm -hmm. did, did this fight a lot more than the other ones? Yeah, it fought, we fought it about 20 minutes. Mm. And we only had eight pound test line on. So how did you get it in the boat? You had a net big enough? Yeah, my husband netted it. Oh, that's good. That's a 30-incher uh, on a crawler harness, Huron County in Lake Huron. We went out of Caseville. Out of Caseville. Famous for perch, but obviously not for walleye, too. Well, look up there and smile. <laughs> Give her a round of applause. More and more big walleye have been caught off the thumb. Leona has proof, and for inspiring me to schedule a trip up there this summer, I'll make Leona Dowd our Real Tree Fishing Awards Angler of the Week. Music sounded like it had promise, but I've got to admit, when I was behind the camera and first heard the kicker band take a whack at this new theme song, I wasn't sure. Gary Cash on electric bass is a hunter and fisherman. He comes from a hunting and fishing family. Rick Francis on drums. He spends a lot of time on his boat. Barry Glenn on steel guitar enjoys the outdoors. But the real dyed-in-the-wool sportsman is lead singer Greg Cash, who was one of the writers of this song. And while he's not a real outdoor guy, Craig Day on keyboards is a top drawer composer and musician. Now, Steve Simpson is at the console at Harvest Productions in Lansing. And next, I took the camera into the studio. It was all electronic over headphones, except for the drums. Well, they said everything was cool, but it sounded pretty rough to me. Greg had just taught Craig the tune. See? There's a push up, there's a push up. Yeah, how does the line go up to the D? 
Welcome back. Born from the five. Oh. Uh, Can you believe this? None of them except Greg had heard the tune or the lyrics until they got to the studio to record it. You can hear Craig's music every afternoon on the soap operas, though. Craig does music every day for Guiding Light, Another World, As the World Turns, and General Hospital. It's now about 11 p.m. It's time to cut the vocals. Right. It took several hours to record the instruments, and now the lead vocal. Greg took about a half hour to lay down the lead track, and then it got really scary. Neither Gary nor Barry had seen the lyrics or tried the song, and here was their first try at the harmonies. Hey, I was worried. It's it always an adventure, no matter where we go. From a favorite, favorite hunting spot to the hottest fishing hole. Outdoor life we all can share with family and friends. We'll do it all together with the practical sportsmen. All together with the practical sportsmen. Well, they worked instrument by instrument, track by track, and built this song. It only lasts a minute, 23 seconds, but the recording session took nearly five hours, which I'm told is very fast. Now we'll add these tracks for you one at a time. You know what you're doing on your chart? Every true outdoorsman loves the fields and streams. The filter through this land of ours and fill the sportsman's dreams. Enjoy what nature holds for us, her bounty never ends. Getting back to basics with the practical sportsman. It's always an adventure, no matter where we go. From a favorite hunting spot to the hottest fishing hole. Outdoor life we all can share with family and friends. We'll do it all together with a practical sportsman. We'll do it all together with a practical sportsman. Hi, Job, I think we've got it. Out of the studio, in front of the crowd, the kicker band is a frequent favorite at the Silver Dollar Saloon in Lansing. Now, they kick back during their recording sessions, but clean up real well when they're performing. And if you want to hear the kicker band, they'll be around Michigan this summer. They'll be starting July 2nd in Alpena, Houghton Lake, Hillman, Battle Creek, Grayling, Port Huron, Traverse City, and back to the Silver Dollar in Lansing at the end of July. In August, they're in Rogers City, Kalamazoo, Ogemaw County, Armada, and Lansing. See them if you can. The kicker band and the practical sportsman theme. I like them. That's show business. That's what I'm in. That's what the kicker band is in. It's kind of fun for me, especially, to go behind their scenes and see the way it's all put together. I suppose they'd think it's scary the way I put <laughs> this show together, too. But next, we have an award-winning recipe that we did three years ago. It has a couple people in it uh, I'm sure you're going to recognize. We received a recipe from Lois Bone for a salmon stuffed walleye. And it just seems that every time Lois sends a recipe, it is an excellent an one. Award winner. Yes. Then we've got a huge walleye filet. 
And we're going to take salmon. This is cooked salmon, pre-cooked, and then uh, just flake. Okay, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of breadcrumbs, onion, and celery, and we're going to saute this. Is we're that celery or green pepper? Celery. Huh. And this could be done on top of the stove, but Lois likes to use the microwave, so we're going to do it her way and just put everything all in a dish and put it in the microwave. A microwave. Oh, right. this is just this, for the stuffing, though. Yes. Well, this recipe, the whole thing adapts very, very well to a microwave. Um, part of it we're going to use the microwave and part of it the oven. Then you're going to go ahead and mix up your stuffing. And hmm. I think it works better with the salmon for the stuffing rather than mm -hmm. if it were reversed, uh, the walleye for the stuffing. And then going to go ahead and now that we're going to use two huge fillets instead of a whole fish. Uh, you know, I prefer that. I really don't think they taste as good if you take a fish and stuff it because of all the, the bones, lateral lines. Well, you skin. can't get all that off. Yeah. This way you can get it off and well, all you've got is just excellent filet. It should be tasty. <laughs> Could you make up so. a sauce with what, right. chicken stock? Chicken stock, a little bit of wine and a little bit of um, half and half. And that goes into the microwave also. And who would like this better than Bob Garner? <laughs> this is a dog on decent wallet. It's a little bigger walleye, too, than, than we keep for eaters sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and it still tastes really, really fresh. I know you got it this past summer at Pim, but it is really fresh, really tasty. Yep, in northern Ontario. That great, was a great recipe. Great for this, yeah, for this recipe. I like the stuffing. Mm-hmm. The, the stuffing in here. You know, salmon stuffing. Yeah, it looks, it looks like shrimp, though. It kind of gets me really excited. Mmm. <laughs> That was a very good flavor. And the sauce on it? Mm hmm Well, what it does is it takes it right out of just the plain good eating walleye category and puts it into a delicate seafood sort of taste on, uh, over yep. the whole thing. You can taste both the stuffing, mm -hmm. the, the character of the salmon, and the walleye, mm -hmm. and that paprika on it. I like that little... Makes it, makes it a quick little jump from just good eating to gourmet, you know, <laughs> a really you gourmet yep. dish. Yep. You notice how much these days... Bob does more talking and I do more eating? <laughs> That's because you're getting smarter. <laughs> Now, most of you folks know what I've been through in the past year, the loss of everything in my business, personal bankruptcy, but hey, it hasn't gotten me down. Well, okay, a little bit, but that was for a while. But now I've bounced back with this positive attitude and started a new TV show, new magazine, and I got the Federation of Michigan Sportsmen going. Charlie Keenan is still the executive director, but our new logo, which we have on hats and T-shirts, will now be the logo and the name of the club, too. So that's simple and I mean, join us. Be a practical sportsman. Changing the name was just practical. What can I say? I wrote an article in the current issue of the Practical Sportsman called Night Moves. I'm talking about walleye, particularly at night, how they find their food. Now, in the daytime, you can see they, they can chase fish because they see them. But what do they do at night? What does a fish do in really murky water? You know, the, the, sometimes we fish in water like Manuskong Bay. You can't even see six inches in there. How do they locate their food? A lot of fishermen think it's because of the color. But if you take a lure like this, sort of an iridiri type that spins, that spinning blade creates a big disturbance in the water that this fish can hear with its ears, which are somewhere behind the gill flaps. It can also hear that with its lateral line. Now, a lateral line, see this little teeny line of scales along here? Every fish has one, and that's like a hearing sensory organ for low-frequency vibrations. What makes a low-frequency vibration? A fish, when it moves its tail in the water, is low frequency. And this walleye can tell the difference between a big fish and a little minnow moving its tail through the lateral line if it comes, say, within 10 feet. So when they go after a spinner like this, they're not going after the color, usually. They're going after what they hear. Now, also, a, a crawdad walking on the bottom will make a disturbance. A worm wiggling on the bottom will make a low frequency, uh, frequency disturbance. Here's a lure. One of my recent favorites I've come across is called a cicada. It has a big fan on the top, and as it goes through the water, it really throbs, puts out a sound. So that's what these fish are moving toward, the sound of other fish swimming, or a wounded fish swimming and trying to get its balance. That's really attractive to them. Now, why would a jig work? You know, a jig looks like about the dumbest lure going. You put a worm or a minnow on the back and drag it across the bottom. Well, remember, a crawdad walks across the bottom, and when, when they're going after something and they hear the bottom moving and they hear that little disturbance through their lateral line, they can pinpoint, if this is within five feet of the fish, they can pinpoint exactly where it is. They'll run and grab it before they even know. Now, that's when you set the hook. If you don't, they'll spit it out. That's your tip on the night moves. Whether you do night moves or day moves this weekend, get outdoors if you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week.
Next week on The Practical Sportsman, we'll have our full range of subjects, a classic venison recipe, outdoor news, a home video, and we'll show you an innovation in archery that isn't expensive, but just took the combined ingenuity of a number of people. Now, these are members of the Flint Bowman who wanted to make their 3D archery course not only challenging, but fun. And let me tell you, their target situations are more like a trip to Disney World than a 3D course. It's a riot. So join me right here, same time, same station, for a fun look at bow hunting and a lot more on next week's brand new edition of The Practical Sportsman. <laughs>